violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get into the video. Violence in the Bronx, two new crimes overnight. A convenience store employee was stabbed during an armed robbery just hours after police say a cab driver was stabbed by his passenger. Wow, so the cab driver's getting stabbed. I guess that's per usual in New York, in the Bronx specifically. And a convenience store owner gets stabbed. Um. I told you guys I was going to keep up with New York. Um, yesterday, Mayor Eric Adams said that this wouldn't happen again. And what he meant by that is that an 11-month-year-old baby girl would not get shot in the Bronx under his jurisdiction, under his leadership again. At that time, at that date, at that same grocery store. Because events like this are happening all over New York City. Okay? <laughs> so, he's right in saying that that won't happen again. Because that same exact scenario won't happen again. But, what will happen again is a kid's going to get shot by a straight bullet. Now, that child may not be a baby girl. It may be a baby boy this time. Or it may not be 11 month years old. Maybe it's seven years old. But either way, he gets what he wants because he says that won't happen again. So that same exact scenario, it's almost impossible for it to repeat itself. But if we know what goes down in the community, it's pretty likely. So I don't even know why he said that. This is John Diaz has details on the overnight crime and what the Bronx Borough president is calling for to stop the violence. They're visuals that have become all too familiar for those living in the Bronx. Crime scene tape strung up all over the borough the last few days. We're all just trying to survive here with this pandemic, and it's just making it worse, all this violence. Early Friday morning, police say five people held the convenience store worker up at gunpoint by the corner of Grand Concourse and East 170th Street. They then st Five people. You're outnumbered. There's nothing you can do, even if you got a strap. You shoot one, maybe they shoot back, maybe they all run. Who knows? Dabbed him in the neck and took off with cash during a separate incident. Did you hear what he said? They stabbed him in the neck and then took off with the cash. So he got the cash, but he still stabs him in the neck. I'm telling you, these super gremlins don't care. In a few hours by the corner of Grand Concourse and East 170th Street, they then stabbed him in the neck and took off with cash during a separate incident a few hours earlier and two miles away in Fordham Heights. A taxi driver was stabbed multiple times by three of his passengers after they fought over a fare. He's now fighting for his life. <laughs> and people wonder why New York taxi drivers don't want to pick up super gremlins. This is why, man. It's sad. It's it's cause, cause it's frightening. For, you got to think about your life. I told y'all how it's like being an Uber and Lyft driver. You got to think about your own safety. These people need they need to be policed. All the ignorance and stupidity is going on. And just oh, so now y'all want to refund the police. You heard what this brother said. Is he a Uncle Tom Coon? Is he a sellout for saying what he said? Because they just acting like I'm the only one. Just yesterday by the Bronx. These people need, they need to be policed. All the ignorance and stupidity is going on. And just yesterday by the Bronx River, police shot and killed a 27-year-old man after he shot at officers first while disobeying their orders to drop his gun. Investigators say the shootout happened after he broke into his ex-girlfriend's apartment. Hours before that, she testified against him in court for allegedly raping her. Woo! <laughs> These super gremlins are out of control. Oh, so this man 
goes and takes advantage of this woman. Then goes and shoots it out with the police. Wow. <laughs> Sources tell CBS2 this suspect had three prior arrests as recently as last week, and the ex had a restraining order against him. This guy's been coming back over here every day, you know, looking for... Her. And no one is forgetting about the 11-month-old girl who was shot by a stray bullet in the cheek on Wednesday. Oh, no one's forgetting about it? Because when you turn on the news, you, you don't hear anything about it. Only local channels are covering these crimes. Seriously. That's the only way that I could find them. Okay. While she was sitting in the car with her mom in Bedford Park. City data shows shooting incidents in the Bronx are up 20% compared to last year. This is certainly not what residents in the Bronx deserve. Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson says Governor Hochul's new approach to stop the guns before they come to the city is a good start. Hochul wants to use state resources and police. That ain't gonna stop nothing. <laughs> that ain't gonna stop a damn thing. Come on. Talking about it's a good start. It ain't about the guns, baby. It's not about the guns. New York City might have more guns than Georgia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because you don't know until they fire it off. <laughs> nah, seriously, everybody's strapped down here. But it was, you know, it was a joke. You could take that tongue in cheek or you take it for what it's worth. I know there aren't more guns in New York City than Georgia, but still, the point still stands. These dudes got hammers, B. Police to catch trucks on throughways loaded with guns for sale from other states where they may be legal. But Gibson also says, Obviously, the federal government needs to step up. And as for that, oh, so now she's trying to blame it on the feds. It's a New York City problem, baby. It's, it's, it's not the feds. <laughs> I love how these politicians try and displace the blame. Come on. That baby girl who was shot in the cheek. Today is her first birthday. But instead of blowing out candles at home with loved ones, she is still in the hospital in critical yet stable condition. And later on today, the community will be hosting a prayer vigil for her. From the Fordham Heights section of the Bronx, John Diaz, CBS 2 News. Terror this afternoon in the Bronx when a woman got home and found an armed man waiting for her in an apartment. And it wasn't the first time he had been busted for this kind of crime. The last time was less than two weeks ago. This time, his crime ended in a gunfight with cops, and he was killed. All right, so let's get into this brother's story, or this gremlin story, rather, because he comes in, he assaulted the woman. This is the story from the last clip. He assaulted the woman, and then he tries to come back. Everybody say he's hanging out around the area. And this is what happens when you're dealing with these super gremlins. Like, I don't... Honestly, I don't even know how they end up getting with these dudes, but it is what it is. Once you in it, you in it. I understand it's hard to get out, okay? Especially if he pulling up to the crib like that. And I don't know if you guys watch Netflix, but there's this show called You and stuff like that. And it's like this guy, he's pretty much a serial killer and he pretty much kills off his girlfriends and stuff like that. Um, But that's happening in the community a lot a lot so it's it's way past the color purple <laughs> it's it's way past the color purple you know what i mean mister he ain't got nothing on these super gremlins on demon time here's i news reporter Stefan kim more chaos in the bronx today after gunfire erupted again leading to a police chase and ending with a suspect dead after being shot by cops. Police say it started with a 911 call from a first floor apartment in this building on Bronx Boulevard. The victim had come home around 1.30 and inside waiting for her was her ex-boyfriend, armed and angry. Officers arrived within minutes. The male refused to comply with the officer's orders to drop his gun. One of the officers then deployed his taser. In so you heard what he said. The guy refused to comply with the orders to drop his gun. Which mostly happens. You know, super gremlins usually don't comply. 
You can't tell him nothing. All right. And then the officer pulled out his taser. So he pulled out non-lethal force with lethal against lethal force. So he immediately pulled, put himself at a disadvantage for acting like he was going to tase this guy. And this is how many chances these officers give these super gremlins. They give them chances till the death. I'm telling you. The male refused to comply with the officer's orders to drop his gun. One of the officers then deployed his taser in an attempt to disarm the male. The male ran into a bedroom, fired two shots, broke a window. Cops say that suspect fled through a first floor window. They chased him into the street and then down into the Bronx River, where they say he refused to put down his gun. Police say this was his 9mm, loaded with a round in the chamber that he refused to put down. It was at this point that the suspect turned toward the officers with the gun in his hand. Three officers then discharged their department-issued firearms at the suspect, striking him in the torso and arm. The suspect then fled into the Bronx River. That 27-year-old suspect, later dying at the hospital, this wasn't the victim's first violent interaction with her ex-boyfriend. According to the criminal complaint, he was arrested for breaking into the same apartment on January 9th. He allegedly dragged her, threatened to kill her, telling her her son is going to be without a mother, and then sexually assaulted her. He has three prior arrests, two felonies still pending in court. He was out on bail. That was wild. That was wild. That's worse than that, um that assault scene in uh, Baby Boy. I don't know if y'all seen that assault scene where Snoop Dogg had took advantage of. That's different. <laughs> Wasn't the victim's first violent interaction with her ex-boyfriend. According to the criminal complaint, he was arrested for breaking into the same apartment on January 9th. He allegedly dragged her, threatened to kill her, telling her her son is gonna be without a mother, and then sexually assaulted her. He has three prior arrests, two felonies still pending in court. He was out on bail. Heavy police this hour. Guys, notice what they said in that last clip. He was out on bail. Autumn charges out on bail. There is still a heavy police presence. The NYPD conducting a thorough investigation. All of this began as police reporting to a call of a break in at one of the apartment buildings behind me. That devolved into shots fired and then a foot chase through the streets here and across the street to where the Bronx River is. And police say that is where they ultimately had to shoot the suspect because he would not drop his weapon. Investigators continue combing the area along the Bronx River Parkway and the river after locating in the water this 9 millimeter handgun they say belonged to the suspect who died after he was shot by police. This all unfolded 1 30 Thursday afternoon when cops responded to a burglary in progress. The resident returned home to find the armed man in her first floor apartment near Bronx Boulevard and East 224th Street. Sources say this was not random and that the suspect and resident knew each other. The male refused to comply with the officer's orders to drop his gun. One of the officers then deployed his taser in an attempt to disarm the male. The male ran into a bedroom, fired two shots, broke a window, and fled out of the window. That led to a chase into the street, across a park, and to the Bronx River. It was at this point that the suspect turned toward the officers with the gun in his hand. Three officers then discharged their department-issued firearms at the suspect, striking him in the torso and arm. The 27-year-old was rushed to the hospital where he died. Police say the suspect had a lengthy criminal record. And we have also learned that the suspect has been arrested three different times by the NYPD. Two of those prior cases are felony.